checked. Rejoice, people of God. Celebrate the life within you and Christ's presence in your midst. Rejoice, people of God. Bow your heads before the one who is our wisdom and strength. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear people of God, a warm welcome to each one of you for this January 1st New Year Covenant service. Today we are going to reflect upon the theme, God's continuing act of grace. Let us look to God in prayer. O oh God, our creator, redeemer and comforter, come to us and be among us. Come as the wind to inspire us. Come as the fire to cleanse us. Come as the dew to refresh us. Come, O oh triune God, Unite us, your people, that we might together discern your will and respond to your call to be the church today. Amen. The choir would lead us in the introit. To the glory of God, may we all arise and sing the opening hymn, hymn number 464, 464, Another Year is Dawning. Yeah. 
kindly be seated. Once again, a warm welcome to each one of you who have joined us physically and all those who have joined us virtually. Together, let us follow the liturgy that will be projected for this covenant service. Dearly beloved, the Christian life to which we are called is a life in Christ, redeemed from sin by him and through him, consecrated to God. Upon this life we have entered, having been admitted into that new covenant of which our Lord Jesus Christ is mediator and which he sealed with his own blood that it might stand forever. On God's part, the covenant is his reconciling of the work to himself in Jesus Christ and his promise that he will fulfill in and through us all that he declared in him, who is the author and perfecter of our faith. That his promise stands, we are sure, for we have known his goodness and proved his grace in our lives day after day. On our part, we have received this covenant through faith and stand pledged to live no more for ourselves, but for him who loved us and gave himself for us and has called us to serve him to the praise of his glory. From time to time, we renew our vows of consecration, especially when we gather at the table of the Lord, and on this day we meet expressly that we may joyfully and solemnly renew the covenant which binds us to God. Let us then, remembering the mercies of God and the hope of his calling, lift up our hearts to him in adoration. Praise and adoration. Let us give thanks for the gift of life and for the presence of the Holy One among us. Let us worship God together. Your response, He is our God. We are the sheep of His pasture, the people of His care. We have come to this worship in thanksgiving, celebration and hope. We have come to thank God for all his blessings in the past year and to look forward in hope. He is our God. We are the sheep of his pasture, the people of his care. Our help is in the name of God who made heaven and the earth. Let us worship him. He is our God. We are the sheep of his pasture, the people of his care. Let us unite in the act of confession. This is a true and faithful saying that Christ Jesus came into this world to save sinners. For our Lord himself says, the Son of Man is come not to be ministered, but to minister and give his life as ransom for many. Then let us approach the mercy seat of God with boldness in Jesus and pray for the forgiveness of our sins. God, forgive our incompleteness, not growing in Christ, not expanding our knowledge of the scriptures, not developing all our talents. Lord, in your mercy, forgive us. God, forgive our disinterest, a lack of concern for needs around us, apathy regarding the lostness of millions, blindness to hurts we could help heal. Lord, in your mercy, forgive us. God, forgive our dishonesty in taking the easy way rather than the right way speaking in one manner while living in another, silencing truth to preserve tranquility, settling for less than what is best, loving tradition more than obeying your pioneering spirit. Lord, in your mercy, forgive us. God, forgive our loudness in talking when we should be listening, 
proclaiming when we should be studying, busying ourselves with new tasks when we should be finding a quiet place to rest. Lord, in your mercy, forgive us. God, forgive our silence in feeling love and failing to whisper it, reeling with joy and not shouting hallelujah, knowing truth and forfeiting an opportunity to share it, sensing a need to share our faith and suppressing the impulse. God, please forgive us. Lord, in your mercy, forgive us. In this moment, when we come to you with broken and contrite hearts, remorseful and repentant, look down upon us in mercy, as Jesus did look with compassion on Peter when he denied his Lord, and in the same love forgive all our sin. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us receive the assurance of pardon. We are forgiven and reconciled with God. Let us be reconciled with one another. Lord, have mercy upon us and forgive us that we may live close to you and be with you forever in eternity. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May we all join in saying the prayer of collect. The prayer of collect is based on the theme, God's continuing act of grace. Let us say in unison, God of the covenant, who in the continuing act of grace, saves those who turn unto him, renew us in your love, change our shame into praise, and restore us into yourself, so that we may be courageous to sing your praises in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, and character produces hope. In the name of the God who loves us, Christ who died for us while we were still sinners, and the Holy Spirit who fills our hearts with love, now and forevermore. Amen. I now invite the praise and worship team to come and lead us in a time of singing and worshiping the Lord. Good morning, everyone. On this first day in the new year, let's begin our worship time by singing God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine.
night His light will shine God is good God is good All the time We were sinners So unworthy Still for us He chose to die He filled us with His Holy Spirit in the last year we've check 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 I'm sure in the last year we've all witnessed the goodness of God in different ways every day of our lives so as we enter into this new year let's continue to claim that he is our strength when we are weak he is the treasure that we seek he is our all in all You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Rising again, I bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all.
Our next chorus is 10,000 Reasons. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the His holy name Sing like never before Oh my soul I'll worship your holy name Your rich in love And your slow to anger Your name is great His holy name Sing like never before Oh my soul I'll worship your holy name I'll worship your holy name Lord I'll worship your we all find 10,000 reasons to praise God probably even if we find one reason a day we already have 365 so if you have at least two or three a day you've got I think more than 10,000 in the year our final chorus for our worship time is Jesus I believe in you Jesus I belong to you and you're the reason that I live and the reason that I sing Into your hands I commit again With all I am For you, Lord You hold my world In the palm of your hand And I am yours forever Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I believe. 
belong to you. You're the reason that I live, the reason that I sing with all. walk with you wherever you go through tears and joy I'll trust in you and I will live in all of your ways and your promises forever Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I belong to you. You're the reason that I live, the reason that I sing with all. coming year may we all find a reason to live a reason to sing with all I am with all that we are knowing that God is in control of every situation that we go through on behalf of the praise and worship team I take this opportunity to wish each one of you a blessed new year ahead and through every song that we sing may God's name be praised thank you We shall enter into the ministry of the Word of God. The Old Testament lesson would be read to us, taken from the book of Exodus, chapter 32, verses 1 to 14. The first reading, the Old Testament reading is taken from Exodus chapter 32 verses 1 to 14. Exodus chapter 32 verses 1 to 14. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered themselves together to Aaron and said to him, Up, make us gods who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And Aaron said to them, 
take off the rings of gold which are in the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the rings of gold which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he received the gold at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool and made a molten calf. And they said, These are your gods. O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early on the morrow, and offered burnt offerings, and brought peace offerings, and the people sat down to eat and drink, and rose up to play. And the Lord said to Moses, Go down, for your people, whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made for themselves a molten calf, and have worshipped it, and sacrificed to it, and said, These are your gods of Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen these people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore, let me alone, that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them, but of you I will make a great nation. But Moses besought the Lord his God, and said, O Lord, why does thy wrath burn hot against thy people, whom thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt, with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say with evil intent, did he bring them forth, to slay them in the mountains, and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from thy fierce wrath, and repent of this evil against thy people. Remember, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou didst swear by thy own self, and didst say to them, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do to his people. Here ends the reading. Praise be to God. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson would be read to us, taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. Bible reading is taken from Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. Revelation chapter 2, beginning to read verse 1. To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not, and have found them false. You have persevered and have endured hardship for my name and have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things that you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. But you have this in your favor. You hate the practices of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Your hands are reading. Praise Thanks be to God. 
May we all stand for the gospel lesson taken from the gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 13, verses 1 to 9. St. Luke chapter 13, beginning at verse 1. There were some present at that very time who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And he answered them, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all other Galileans because they suffered in this way? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Or those 18 on whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others who lived in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. The parable of the barren fig tree. And he told this parable, a man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. And he said to the wine dresser, Look, for three years now I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and I find none. Cut it down. Why should it use up the ground? And he answered him, Sir, let it alone this year also, until I dig around it and put on manure. Then if it should bear fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. Here ends the gospel lesson. Praise be to thee, O Christ. As we sing hymn number 466, O God, the Rock of Ages, may I invite the parishioners to come forward to receive the promise cards. We will sing the hymn 466, 466, O oh God, the Rock of Ages.
Please be seated. Dearly beloved, on behalf of my family, I would like to wish each one of you a very happy and a blessed new year, 2024. May the grace of God be sufficient for you. May his mercies attend you. May the presence of God engulf you. May the love of God envelop you. May God's peace rule your hearts. May Lord be the Lord of your lives. This is my prayer. This is our wish, our desire to everyone, to you and your loved ones. God bless each one of you. <clears throat> Do not mind me for my rough throat, please. A pastor, during the middle of the sermon, <clears throat> he paused for a moment and he asked the congregation the question, those of you who are not sure of going to heaven, please stand. Nobody stood. But for one person, this gentleman, he did not hear anything what the pastor said. All that he heard was stand because he was distracted by many other things. So the only word that he heard was stand. And so quickly he just stood up. The pastor looked at him and asked, Dear gentlemen, why are you standing? This person answered the pastor saying, I do not know, pastor, what the others voted for, but I trust my pastor. I know he will not let me down, so I stand along with him. <laughs> Dear friends, this morning, the first day in this new year, we are here as a community of people of God for a very solemn occasion, the covenant service, community coming together resolving to renew the covenant with God, our maker, God, our redeemer, God, our sustainer, triune God, the faithful one. Indeed, it is a very, very solemn occasion that we have gathered here for this morning to renew the covenant as a community. It is both individual it is also a corporate act that we are going to enter into. The three readings that were read to us this morning talks to us about three dimensions of God's love. And that's what I'm going to share with you all briefly this morning. The Old Testament lesson that was taken from Exodus chapter 32 and spilling on to 33 as well, talks to us about God's parental love to his children. If you had listened carefully, this particular text, there is a dialogue that unfolds between Moses and God, Yahweh. Moses is on top of the mountain the Israelites are down waiting for him. It's been quite some time. They become restless. And as usual, the cycle of the Israelites' lifestyle, they go back. They build themselves a golden calf to worship. They could not wait patiently to hear the will of God from Moses, what God has to tell them. But they were so impatient and they say, we do not know what has become of him. And so let us build for ourselves gods. And they even go to the extent to say that these are the gods that led us out of Egypt. Now looking at this, we see the heart of God. God telling Moses that these people are leading a corrupt life. They have been perverse in their acts. They have gone astray. 
they have not heeded to my commands and ordinance, and they have built for themselves gods, and they are worshipping them. <coughs> and so God says, my wrath will come upon them. My anger will be upon them. But for you, I will bless you and make you a holy nation. We see the heart of God here, the anger, his wrath, because the people have gone astray and they have started leading the corrupt life, the perverse life. But Moses, the dialogue that unfolds there, he starts pleading with God because Moses knew what it means to experience the absence of the presence of God. When God says, I will not go with you, Moses begins to plead with God. He tells, because he, he very well understood what this threat means. He was not going to settle for any denial of the presence of God. He knew what this absence of the very presence of God would mean to him and to the Israel as a community. Because no presence of God would mean they will lose their identity and they will once again become no people. No God, no people. Because it was God who chose them. It was God who elected them as a chosen people for his own, to be his own. And it is he who gave them the identity. From no people, they have become a people of God. And now the absence of the presence of God meant they are again going to lose their very identity. And that was more dreadful even as Moses was imagining. And hence, he starts to plead with God, Yahweh. He says, God, how can you do this to your own people? He starts pleading based on the covenantal mercies of God. He says, God, these are your people whom you delivered out of the Egyptian hands. And it is you who brought them out. Yes, I know that they have become stiff-necked. I know that they are leading a corrupt and perverse life. But please do not be angry to the extent that you will remove your presence. And we see how, because of the way Moses pleads, and from covenantal mercies, He's also basing his plea, his intercession on the very commission that God gave him. It is you, Lord, who called me and you asked me to lead this people. Now I am on my duty. Would not your presence go with us? And God is hearing to all this plea. Dearly beloved, the absence of the presence of God is a very, very dreadful thing for a child of God. If we see in the scripture, the servants of God pleading to God, Psalmist David saying, cast me not away from your presence, Lord. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Because they understood what it means to live in the absence of the presence of God. The denial of the presence of God meant that we lose our identity of being the very children of God. And that is why we see Moses pleading on the covenantal mercies of God, pleading on the very commission that God gave him. And he goes on, he never gives up. And God says, Moses, I will show you mercy. I will go with you. If you see the original language, the you is in the singular, which means God is giving Moses the assurance that he will be with Moses. But Moses is not going to settle for that. If you read in chapter 33, verses 14 following again, he says, Lord God, if your presence will not go with us, if your presence will not go with us, do not take us up from here. And then following verses he says, show me your kindness, show us your glory, show us your ways. And then we see how God's heart and mind changes. His anger 
comes down just like a parental love when a child does something wrong as parents we get angry for some time we do not even want to talk to the children we want to show and express we are hurt or we are angry but then when the child comes back embracing us saying sorry everything just comes down and that is what we see here happening because god saw israel as a child as we see in hosea chapter 11 god saw israel as a child he loved israel as a child and he says that i brought my son out of egypt it was i who taught ephraim to walk it is i who healed them but they did not realize the parental love of god and here finally we see when moses continues to plead god's anger sobers down so much so that he says i will do the very thing that you asked for moses i will see that all the goodness will pass before you i will be with you and the you now is no longer singular it is plural i will be with you i will walk with you i will journey with you the parental love of god the covenantal faithfulness of god never ceases his mercies never never come to an end as jeremiah writing in the lamentations chapter 3 verse 20 following the steadfast love of the lord never ceases his mercies never come to an end no shakespeare's words so beautifully penned down saying o mom- momentary grace of mortal men that we so often hunt for rather than the grace of god that is what as human beings we do more often than never the momentary grace of mortal men that we hunt for rather than the grace of god that we search for but it is purely god's covenantal mercies and his faithfulness and his love that is steadfast the very parental love of god which has brought us thus far no karl barth the theology and he says it very well after writing thousands of pages on church dogmatics he arrives at this one definition of god to say god is the one who loves and loves god is the one who loves and loves i'm sure each one of us would vouch for that that is our experience that has been throughout the year 2023 god has been graciously leading us and his love has been steadfast in our lives we would have gone astray like the people of israel but it is god who continues to watch over us and enabling us to enter this year 2024 moving on from there the gospel lesson that was read to us gospel of luke chapter 13 verses 1 following here we see the persevering love of god god's love never gives up on us you know that beautiful chorus that we sing he is still working on me he is still working on us it took him just a week to make the moon and the stars but he is still working on us he's never given up on us this beautiful parable that we see here the owner comes to say that i've seen this victory for three long years and every time i come there are no fruits it's just there why should it be there let it be cut off the owner says to the gardener but the gardener requests and pleads with the owner to say sir let it be one more year i will tend it i will care for it i will give it the manure it requires let it let us wait one more year and see if it will yield fruit it is the same 
love that God has for each one of us. The love perseveres, the love that would not give up on us. The times that we have faltered, the times that we have wronged against God, against one another, the times that we have done things which were not according to God's will. As the psalmist says, he has not kept an account of our wrongdoings. As far as east is from the west, he has blotted our sins and transgressions. You know, forgiveness for God does not mean I forgive and I do not forget. That's what the human says. But for divine, for God, for his love, the love that perseveres say, I forgive and I forgive, which means I blot out your transgressions, I blot out your sins, and it is a clean white paper altogether. I have not kept an account. I do not carry the baggage. But when I see you, I still wait patiently with all the perseverance that I will not give up on you until I am done with you to be formed in the image and likeness of God himself. Because that is the intention in which God created human beings. We read from Genesis chapter 1 onwards, God created each one of us in his image, in his likeness. When that image was marred because of our transgressions, and now even in our everyday, day-to-day -day lives, the acts that we involve in, the deeds that we do to mar that original image, God says, I am still, I have not given up on you. The covenantal love of God perseveres to make us what we ought to become. And finally, the third dimension is the love of God paves way for new beginnings. The love of God, the covenantal love of God paves way for new beginnings. From the epistle lesson taken from the book of Revelation chapter 2 verses beginning one, from one onwards. The message of God to the church at Ephesus. We see here the heart of God very, very clearly, the desire and the heart of God. The message comes very clear to the church at Ephesus. God is applauding this church. God is praising this church. In the beginning verses, if we see, God is so happy and he's praising, he's applauding because this church has been a sacrifi sacrificial church. This church has been a serving church, taking care of the needs of the poor and the needy. This church has endured, has labored to the point of exhaustion, the hard work, he says, I have seen your labor. I have seen your work. I have seen your service. I have seen the way that you endure the sufferings. And I applaud you for that. They have toiled. They have worked hard to the point of exhaustion. But the message of the Lord does not stop there. He says, but... See from where you have fallen. Where is the first love? This is the heart of the God. Looking and searching for that first love which the church had for him in the beginning. There is labor, there is hard work, there is service, there is endurance of suffering, there is sacrificial service. But all that is there God is looking at this church and asking, where is the first love? Dearly beloved, the important question that we need to pause and ask ourselves as a community this morning. If God were to write a message for us, what would that be? To the church at Ephesus, labor cannot become a substitute for love. Performance cannot become a substitute for passion. Demonstration cannot take the place for the deeds that desire God. 
the heart of the matter was a matter of the heart. The church suffered with a canker in the heart. That was the major problem which God identified. And he's pointing out to say, where is the first love? Where, search from where you have fallen. And he does not stop there. He paves the way for a new beginning. He says, remember. Remember the passion. Remember the enthusiasm. Remember the zeal. Remember the love that you had for me in the beginning. Remember. Remind yourself of that. You're now involved in so many things. But remind yourself of that very passion, that love that you had for me in the very beginning. Many times we glory in the past and our present seems gloomy. It's a reminder for us even this morning to ask ourselves, do we still have that same passion and love for God and God's work and the house of God, the ministries of God, the things that pleases God? Do we indulge, involve ourselves in the ministries of God that would express our real love for God? Or was, what is it that we want to showcase? Our worship cannot be a divided loyalty. God expects undivided loyalty and commitment. You know, our God is a very possessive God. The covenantal relationship that God wants to have with his children, it is, it is more or less something like the relationship, the covenantal relationship which a husband and wife would enjoy and experience. The undivided loyalty, undivided commitment, undivided love and attention. It is that God is so possessive of us. He expects that love from us as his children. And that is why his heart goes out to say, remind yourself of the first love that you had for me. Dearly beloved, even as we have gathered here, this morning for this very solemn occasion to renew the covenantal relationship with God. We need to ask ourselves, have I come here? Are we here to worship God, giving him the undivided attention, undivided loyalty to express my covenantal relationship with God? Or am I here just as one of the onlookers or bystanders are those wishy-washy people. You know, they come on festival days just to wish people, just to say, hey, I'm there. You know, in some of the WhatsApp messages, they leave this line, hey, I'm there. That's the message we want to give to God on the festival days. If we consider this renewal of covenant, this act by the community, a solemn one, where is the entire congregation? If our, permit me to say this, I have not taken their permission. If our organist could be here by 8.30 after attending the watch night service. If Mano Aunty could be here by 8.30, our treasurer sir, after attending the, uh, the midnight service, can be here by 8.30. Where have all our dear wards? What has kept you from coming together to participate in this very solemn occasion, the renewal of the covenant? Many think that my part is over and hence I needn't have to take part in the other part of the worship service. Many say that I can go the time I wish I want to. What happens to the thanksgiving, to the praise and adoration, to the confession approaching the mercy seat of God? I speak to you as a pastor of the church. When I see the 
empty pews on this very solemn occasion where we need to, as a community of people of God, coming together to renew the covenantal relationship with God who has led us thus far as individuals, as individual family, as a corporate family. Is it not our duty to come together and to say, God, I stand before you with humility. We stand before you with humility. No longer it is I, but my life is for you. God's faithfulness expresses to us the parental love. The love that will not fail us. The love that will embrace us always, no matter what our lives are, even if it is perverse or corrupted. God changes his mind to love us so much. God perseveres his love upon us. He will not give up on us until we are formed in that perfect image of God, in his likeness. It is that love of God which paves the way for new beginning. Just that the message that came to the church at Ephesus, remind yourself of the love that you've fallen from. Repent and return. And if you do so, you can partake of the tree of life. You can enjoy the abundance of life. You can enjoy that blessings. But there is a warning if you do not. The church was in danger of losing the light. Where there is no love, the danger is that we lose the light that comes from God. Let us introspect our lives, the life of the community as people of God. What is our response to this unfailing love of God? May God continue to lead us and enable us to become what we ought to be. God bless us all. Amen. Having been exhorted by the word of God, may we all arise and affirm our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Continue to remain standing as we participate in the renewal of the covenant. And now, beloved, let us with all our hearts and minds renew our part in the covenant that God has made with God's people and take the yoke of Christ upon us. The taking of his yoke means that we are heartily content that he should appoint us our place and work and that he alone should be our reward. Christ has many services to be done. Some are easy, others are difficult. Some bring honor, others bring reproach. Some are suitable to our natural inclinations and temporal interests, others are contrary to both. In some, we may please Christ and please ourselves. In others, we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. Yet the power to do all these things is assuredly given to us in Christ who strengthens us. Therefore, let us make the covenant of God our own. Let us engage our hearts to the Lord and resolve in his strength never to go back. Being thus prepared, let us now in sincere dependence on his grace and trusting in his promises, give ourselves anew to him, meekly kneeling upon our knees. You may sit or kneel.
our loving and merciful God, since you have called us through Christ our Lord to share in this gracious covenant, we take upon ourselves with joy the yoke of obedience and for love of you commit ourselves to seek and do your perfect will. We are no longer our own but yours. Let us all say together, we are no longer our own but yours. Put us to do what you will, set us with whom you will, put us to doing put us to suffering. Let us be employed for you or laid aside for you, exalted for you or brought low for you. Let us have nothing. We freely and heartily yield all things to your pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, you are, so be it. And let the covenant that we have made on earth be ratified in heaven. Amen. I now invite our church secretary to make the announcements. A very warm good morning to members and families and friends and those joining us online. We welcome visitors who are with us today to worship with us. We're always happy to have you here. A special thank you to Reverend Violet for bringing us God's message. I wish to acknowledge the presence among us about, of Mr. Ashish, the son of the late Anthony Isaac and Mrs. Esther Isaac with his bride who got married recently. Uh, would you like to stand up so that the congregation can acknowledge your presence here today? Please take a moment to wish and congratulate them after the service. Thank you. A reminder again of our thank offering covers which have been placed on the pews for your convenience. Please use those covers to put in your thank offering and you can bring it up to the altar for blessing. As we close our Christmas and New Year celebrations, we also begin another year, our first day of yet another year of our lives. And as we stare at the uncertainties and the unknown, we take courage in the promise of Emmanuel, God with us. We thank God for granting us the blessed assurance that God will be with us in any eventuality and God will be with us in every circumstance of our lives. On behalf of the Presbyter, Reverend Violet, Reverend Dennis, and members of the Pastor Committee, I wish each one of you and your families a year richly blessed by God. And we pray that our lives are filled with gratitude for the blessings received in the past and for the promises waiting for us in the future. We seek God's guidance as we embark on another year of our lives where we use our, where we use the time given granted to us in our service and witness for God, another year to experience and be grateful for God's mercies and faithfulness in our lives. On behalf of the pastors and the members of the pastorate committee, I wish each one of you a blessed new year. Thank you. May we all arise for the breaking of the bread.
how very good and pleasant it is when people of God live together in unity. We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Now I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. As we remain standing, we shall join together in singing hymn number 465, standing at the portal. While the hymn is sung, we shall offer ourselves in offerings for the glory of God.
offer ourselves to you. Unworthy we come to you as we are, by that way your son Jesus of Nazareth, and in his name we ask you to accept and use us, and these gifts, how it best pleases you, all that is created is yours, and everything that we can offer already belongs to you. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Let's say the prayer of God's presence together. Be present, be present. O Jesus, you good high priest, as you were in the midst of your disciples, and make yourself known to us in the breaking of the bread, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Truly, it is right and good to glorify you at all times and in all places by offering you our thanksgiving, O Lord, Holy Father. You spoke and the light shattered darkness order arose from confusion. You breathed into the dust of the earth and we were formed in your image. Through your Son, our Lord Jesus, you came to us while we wandered. You met us as a refugee, a threatened child. You called us by name to leave what is comfortable, to be his disciples, friends and partners. With his outstretched arms on the cross and through his death he bore our sins and through his resurrection we are saved. And through your Holy Spirit, you brood over the chaos that we create, mothering us and shaping a new creation. You enlighten everyone coming into the world. You inspire the prophets and the apostles to find the right word at the right time. You liberate, equip, and commission your people for the continuance of your mission to make everything new. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim and say your glory. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread when he had given thanks to you. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Lord, we commemorate your death on the cross. We celebrate your resurrection. Eternal God, let your Holy Spirit move in power over us and over these earthly gifts of bread and wine, that they may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ, and that we may become one in him. May his coming in glory find us ever watchful in prayer, strong in truth and love, faithful in the breaking of the bread. Then at last all people will be free, all divisions healed, and with your whole creation we will sing your praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, holy be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us say the prayer of humble access together. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs from under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies and souls may be made clean by his most precious body and blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. 
When we break the bread, do we not share in the body of Christ? We seek to share your life, precious God. When we lift the cup, do we not share in the lifeblood of Jesus Christ? We seek to share your life, precious God. O Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. Things of God are for the people of God to draw with confidence to the table of grace.
Having now by faith received the sacrament of the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, let us give thanks to him. Merciful God of all creation, Holy Father of all people, through our Lord Jesus Christ, who united all things in his fullness, we join your whole creation in exultant praise of your bountiful goodness. You have now touched us with new life and filled us with new hope that your reign will come, that the hungry will be fed, that the oppressed will be set free from evil, that your reconciling work will be done, that love and faithfulness will meet together, justice and peace will kiss each other, and the whole creation will be filled with your glory. Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. Let us receive the benediction with confidence in our hearts. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved but abides forever. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from this time forth and forever. Peace be to his people. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn number 438, 438, O God, our help in ages past. <laughs> 